Chuck, I got another explainer for you. Awesome. This one is things you can do with chemical energy. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. There are other kinds of energies that we know about. There's right. like Chris, crystal, crystal energy. <laughs> crystal energy, yes. Not, the, the type, not. The type of energy that, you know, brings about wellness and, and healing and. <laughs> Yeah, crystals are the lowest energy state of their configuration. <laughs> so they contain no, no energy to give. No, no nothing. They got nothing they for you. They got nothing to give. Oh, my God. And they have God. such low energy, they're, they're, they're very permanent. Right. Um, things that can drop to another energy state, they're not so permanent in, in the environment. But crystals right. are per- That's why there's like salt. Forever, <laughs> forever, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Just Every- you, it went from the most valuable <laughs> substance on earth, the most va- to the point where we have sayings like "is worth his weight in salt" to zero <laughs> value. <laughs> Because <laughs> salt just it, dig it up from two million year old dried lake bed is still there. It's still there, all right. So, so chemical so, energy. Yeah, chemical energy. So this is energy stored inside the atom, mm. inside the uh, and among the electrons of the atom. Interesting. Okay, to be distinguished from nuclear energy. Right. So the the nucleus of an atom is nuclear energy. So right. energy can take many different forms. It's kinetic energy, right. energy of motion. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So chemical energy is what's the energy source of traditional bombs. Okay, makes sense. That's what that's that's chemical energy. Chemical energy is in all of our rockets. Right. Okay, you ignite it, the rocket takes off. <laughs> it's converting one set of chemicals into and another set of chemicals, and it's releasing energy. Okay. Okay? And we call that exothermic. Exothermic. You can also have a set of chemicals that turn into other chemicals, and they absorb energy. We would call those what? Endothermic. Endothermic. And we might have seen those if you play weekend softball, right. because the first aid kit has a little packet to shake it. Yeah. You, you slap, slap it, it and then it turns cold. Cold, right. Cold pack. The, the, cold pack. It's cold pack. It's called. cold packs. There's cold packs and you have right. hot packs, which right. is exothermic. All right. That's all chemical energy. Now, suppose I want to store the chemical energy and use just as much as I need at any given moment. Well, that wouldn't be a bomb because that releases it all at once. Right. Okay. Okay. T- you ignite TNT. It's done. Right. But suppose I want to sort of leak it out when I need it, mm. just as much as I need for that moment. When you set up a device that has chemical energy work that way for you, we call that a battery. Sweet. Ooh. Gotcha. As opposed okay. to now, let me think, let, let's extend this out. As opposed to like a gas tank, because that's just holding the gas. Okay, that's true. That's true. So the gas because the, the actual the actual uh, uh, um, uh, interaction happens in the engine. The gas is only pushing it through a line so it can explode inside that chemical reaction in the gas in the engine. The, uh, what kind of car are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> Old fashioned. Oh, that's right. oh, 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 yeah, yeah, you know, remember those? I, I, know, remember. I know what you drive, so remember those? Remember those things? You know, right after the horse, we got that. That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Way back, somebody just said, "All right, I'm done with horses. Exactly. Let's let's figure out another way to do that." So, so the difference there, of course, uh, uh, gasoline is also chemical energy, right? High, very high dense chemical energy, but you're only using like little bits of it at a time. Yes, a time. And, and you draw it as you need it. That's true. But we wouldn't call that a battery. Right. Exactly. Okay? Now, I, the question is, could you make a battery out of gasoline? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's, a, that's a dangerous battery, man. <laughs> That's a very I, I, day. I, maybe I hadn't thought about that. Right. Okay. Let me tell you how batteries work. Okay. So when you have a neutral atom, it has exactly as many electrons as protons, canceling the electric field so that it is net neutral in charge. Okay. okay? 
Okay. Suppose I take away an electron. Uh Uh-oh. Now I have a negative charge where I have the electron because all electrons are negatively charged. Uh And then left over, the atom now has a positive charge. Positive charge. It's got one more proton than electrons in orbit around it. Right. And as you know, opposite charges- Attract. Attract. So they want to come back together. Right. Right. They want to come back together. Damn, baby. Is that simple? Why are you leaving like that? <laughs> What's it? Stop. Stop personifying. All my, I'm, I'm, I'm talking good physics here, and you got to make it a whole. <laughs> just trying to get back with you, girl. That's all I'm trying to do. I feel out of balance. I feel negative. <laughs> my life has been a negative uh, journey. Uh, baby, <laughs> you're the only positive thing in my life, girl. I need you back. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, if you separate those charges, they want to come back together. Okay. All right. You have to ask, how badly do they want to do this? You're talking about electromagnetic forces, which are huge. Okay. Huge. I'll give an example. If you took away all the electrons from like the top cubic centimeter in the tip of the space shuttle, Mm. take all those electrons out and stick it at the base of the launch pad. Okay. The space shuttle would not be able to take off. (laughs) What kind of (laughs) What the hell is that? (laughs) These are some powerful forces operating. Wow. The, the, The electrons you pulled away will be attracting the positive chart. Well, what would happen is it would take off and blast a hole through the thing. Okay. I mean, they right. would come back together and, and the engines would still go up. But if it was all rigidly attached, it would not be able to take off against the thrust of the engine. That's amazing. That's how powerful, that's how powerful electromagnetic, electromagnetic forces, forces are. are. Way stronger than gravity. Like, yes. By, by, by 40 orders of magnitude stronger than gravity. Wow. Okay, gravity, gravity, you could just bend down and pick up a rock right. against the wishes of the entire mass of the earth. Yes. Okay. Electromagnetic that's, that's, forces actually kick sand in the face of gravity as a force. Yes. Introducing the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E SUV. Ford is electrifying its icons to keep the soul of driving alive while shifting towards an electric vehicle future. The Mustang Mach-E is an SUV with the bold style of a Mustang, which means you can make a bold statement and still be practical. The 2023 Mustang Mach-E GT Performance Edition SUV achieves zero to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. It's an EV with exhilarating torque and available features like electric all-wheel drive and a drive mode called Unbridled. It has room for you, your people, and your things with five seats and a frunk, otherwise known as a front trunk. Experience the freedom and thrill of the drive while knowing your needs can still be met. Learn more about the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E SUV at Ford.com slash SUVs slash Mach hyphen E. Due to high demand and global supply chain constraints, some models, trims, and features may not be available or may be subject to change. Check with your local dealer for current information. For the zero to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds, Ford test data is based on a typical industry methodology using one foot rollout. Your results may vary. Back to the battery. So I have this this atom here, atom of my choice. Right. And different atoms will behave differently, but that's fine. And I want to separate the electron. That takes energy. Right. Obviously, you have to pull it away. So you pump energy into the system, drag all the electrons away from all the atoms, and store them over in this other side. Right. Okay? All right. And you got to, you got to prevent them from spontaneously coming back. So you got to put barriers in there and stuff. Okay. Now, if you want the electrons to come back, you set up a wire connecting one end to the other and the electrons can flow and and get to the other side. Right. Throw flow freely. Or you, but generally you'll put some load in there, a light bulb, a computer, right. a, 
car. Right. Some, you're going to put something in there to convert the chemical energy to electrical energy. Right. Because it's a flow of electrons. And that electrical energy is at your disposal to turn into kinetic energy to move a car to um, to what the needs of your computer to run circuits for for the for the rabbits playing drums across your carpet. Um, <laughs> batteries can then do anything you need for doing so. But eventually, what happens? Well, they run out. Yeah, all the, all the electrons run of, move. They run out of electrons. They're reattached. And we used to just throw away those batteries. Right. Okay. Right. Oh, so now you need electrical. You need the electrical to go back into the battery to store again the again. electrons so that you can start again. the process all over again. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why rechargeable batteries have to be differently um, conceived inside right. compared to regular batteries. Okay. Of course, if you stick a rechargeable battery into a car, mm -hmm. then the car uses the full charge and then you recharge it. Well, I was thinking of one giant D battery. <laughs> There's a big giant D battery, just shove it in the back of the car. <laughs> so it's got to take two batteries. You know, that, take that's two. true. You, you always put one, it up in one, there. Yeah, one going the opposite. I don't know direction. anything that you ever use one D battery. That's right? true. There's You're absolutely about right. I can't think of one thing that ever used one D battery. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. You're right, right. And don't ask me because I don't have the answer. Why is it there's double A AA and triple A batteries, but no single A? And why is it there? Why are there C batteries and D batteries, but there's no B batteries? Don't ask me because I don't know. <laughs> so uh, uh, rechargeables, they need a way for things to go back both directions. Right. Okay. So that the clever designs within and depending on what chemicals are used. In the old days, they had lead acid lead, batteries. Right. Lead batteries. You heard lead batteries, right? Lead batteries, yeah. car, They're good for cars because right. they have very um, – you can draw from them a very big impulse of current, which was good for starting the engine. Back in the old days, just after horses, they would crank. You know, remember the crank? Right, the crank, yeah. Okay, was, the, the, the crank yeah. was, a, okay, then it became an electric starter. All right, that was a big advance. So you didn't have to get all dirtied with your top hat, okay, by <laughs> cranking the engine. <laughs> On your way to the Monopoly board. <laughs> <laughs> Your top hat and monocle. Let me crank that car. I must go by Baltic Avenue. <laughs> now, now, by the way, depending on what the chemical, remember there was a nickel cadmium batteries. Right. Uh, there was lithium batteries, lithium, lithium ion. ion batteries. Right. Okay. So what what is an ion? An ion is that thing that does not, it's the atom that doesn't have a balanced charge. Right. Okay. So the, you pull away the electron, you've left a positive ion. You could also force feed an electron onto an atom so it has an extra electron. Then it's have a negative ion. Right. So you can have negative or So that's what an ion is. Uh, so this is the fundamentals of a battery. And some batteries will move the electrons. Some will move the ions. And some will move both in some in some. Uh, in some choreography that enables you to separate the charges, the charges come back and separate them again every time you recharge. That's so that's the fundamentals cool. of a that's battery. Yes, a battery. it's brilliant. I will say it is brilliant, but right now what comes to mind is something that I found out from you by mistake, which is when we send anything into outer space, what we are really doing is taking a tank of hydrogen and a tank of oxygen and combining them to make an exothermic reaction, which then leaves you with water. And I do not understand why we are trying to make cars with batteries when we could just use that. Oh, oh, okay. Good question. Are you ready? Go ahead. Uh, because hydrogen is explosive. <laughs> Go, go, go. Have that conversation with the Hindenburg, okay? okay. And come back, talk to me after. Uh, I got you. That makes sense. Maybe you can make a vessel that contains the hydrogen, because you have to separate the hydrogen and oxygen to begin with from your water, 
All right, that takes energy. You know how much energy that takes? The yeah. same energy you get out when they come back together. Oh. Okay, there's no such thing as a free lunch here. In fact, it costs you a little more energy from the laws of thermodynamics. So your car, and there's some cars that are trying to do this, it's called a hydrogen fuel cell, where you have hydrogen over here and oxygen over there. It comes together, it makes energy, and it drives your car. Okay, then you got to drop off somewhere and and, and and fill up your hydrogen, okay, right. or find some way to to break apart the hydrogen and oxygen in your moving vehicle as it is. You'd stop by the water filling station like the railroads used to do, right. and that would be your. And, but you still need a thing to make that happen, yeah. or you might have solar driven cars, okay, where the, where the skin of the car is is, a, is no solar boat. panels, right. Okay, but then you can only drive in the daytime. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, well, you got to store, you gotta store the energy. And guess what you're going to store the energy in? A battery. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so there you have it, Chuck. I, you know, and all these different the chemist battery chemistries all have different um, uh, uh, features. Uh, pluses and minuses among them. And the latest sort of best battery for so many of our needs is a lithium ion battery. Right. And this uses the element lithium, the third element created in the beginning of the universe, nice. the hydrogen, then helium, then lithium. Look so it, it, it's cosmic actually. Okay. We can't beat that. Tell you that. Well, that's, you, that's yeah. full circle for everything we do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, Chuck, thanks for being there for this. Always a pleasure. Yet another explainer for our Star Talk audience. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, bidding you to keep looking up. <laughs>